Hi everyone, it's John Mitchell. Welcome to part five of the exam preparation series. Uh, over the past few weeks, I've had some requests to do a video on an organisation. So like an organisation you've studied this year that can be applied to different parts of the study design. I've tried to avoid it, to be all in all honesty, because I've found it really difficult to do on a video. Um, look, the course is so big and to get an organisation uh, often you normally have to sort of in class do it do the study yourself and actually you know go over it in class and things like that so the video would be too big um, to cover the whole course so I've had even more requests though over the last week so I've tried to give it my best shot so then at least you've got something if you haven't studied an organization you've at least got something um, to go off and then from here you can go and do your own study I know there's only a few days left but um, you can go and do your own study on uh, that particular organisation that we're going to cover, which is Coca-Cola. If you have an organisation um, that you've already studied this year, then that's fine. There's no need to watch this video. So today I'm going to look at Coca-Cola. I won't be able to cover the entire study design, but I'll go through um, the aspects of operations management, social responsibility and change management. Um, and they won't be you know, aspects of the all of, they won't cover all of those topics in, in full detail um, because to do that, it's the video would go for about two hours. So, um, so we're going to keep it short and sweet, but hopefully give you enough information that you can you can um, write some quality answers. So first of all, Coca Cola is a carbonated soft drink company that sells a variety of products in stores, restaurants, and vending machines. I'm sure you all know what Coca Cola or who Coca Cola is. Over the past couple of years though, it's undergone some changes in its manufacturing processes to try and become more socially responsible and also to reduce their cost in all honesty. Um, so let's look at the operations. It's one of the most recognisable products in the world, so as a result of that it's really important that its quality is the same for every can and bottle and they distribute it obviously through many parts of the world, so that needs to be the same wherever you go. The bottling factories are set up with lots of technology. so. In, Historically, the bottling companies are franchises of Coca-Cola. It's not like the head company, it's franchised out, but the head company has a major say in how things operate in those franchises. And we'll quickly look at the four main operations elements. So first of all, facilities. The bottling factories use a product layout. Look, you can argue that it's a process layout as well. Um, there's a link on the blog there to, in the blog post, um, to the full video of their operations. So you can have a look there. You could argue either one. Uh, where bottles move along the assembly line. This allows for a low variety of products. Essentially, it's just looking at mainly the Coca-Cola being produced, um, the traditional Coca-Cola, um, but extreme volume, massive amounts of volume per day. Materials, the supply chain is really interesting actually. It needs to be really well managed because there's such a large amount of product produced each day. So obviously they have to get enough supplies in and they have to get the finished product out because they, one of Coca-Cola Coca -Cola really tries to never be out of stock. That's one thing they really try to do. Um, and the Coca-Cola concentrate is actually produced by the head company. It's not the bottling factories that produce the actual concentrate. They mix the concentrate in with all the other ingredients, but the actual concentrate is um, made by the head company to ensure the same quality across the entire globe. Now that creates a real logistical problem to distribute it across the world. It also is done to ensure that the key recipe of the concentrate is kept secret because um, no one really knows exactly, except the head company, no one really knows exactly what goes in to that concentrate. So new technologies have been implemented to improve the automation of the supply chain process and that ensures that the bottling franchises are never out of stock. So they've implemented these new technologies so that all their ordering and things like that, this stock control, is automated. In terms of quality, you could argue that Coca-Cola uses a quality control or a total quality management. Either one you could argue. Um, but what happens, a couple of things they do is they use state-of-the-art imaging technology that takes photos of every single bottle and can um, and will automatically reject those that are faulty. So it's not a human being sitting there going through each bottle to make sure everything's fine. This imaging is in there and bang, it's automatically, it goes that fast um, and it just rejects it itself. Also, every batch of Coca-Cola is tested to ensure it meets the ingredients requirements. They've got some 
um, some sort of ranges that all the different elements have to be in. And if it doesn't meet that, then it won't be produced. And even the Coca-Cola branding must also meet quality standards to ensure that the color red is virtually identical across the globe. So there's a formula that they have to do and a process that they go through to ensure that quality. Because, I mean, if you've got, um, you go and buy a Coca-Cola, it's not really the right red, you probably think that it's fake. So they, they're trying to ensure that the product you get everywhere around the world is virtually the same. In terms of technology, there's conveyor belt technology, all the bottling technology allow for speed of production, um, also allow for the bottles to be, to be made quickly and efficiently. They work much quicker and more efficiently than humans ever could. Massive cost to implement those technologies, but the, in the long run they improve quality and they improve productivity. So as I said before, the thermal imaging takes high speed photos of every single product. Computer aided design is used to design changes in the bottles. Now, in terms of change management, in recent years Coca-Cola has made changes to its operations. Now, the reason they've done that is it's enabled them to, first of all, reduce their costs, but also be more socially, more a socially responsible company. Um, Coca-Cola has decided to manufacture the light plastic bottles themselves. So you know those, um, to the actual plastic bottles, they do that themselves, uh, rather than outsourcing this to bottling franchises. Now the driving force for that was a social trend because they've then gained control over uh, making light plastic rather than a thicker plastic and it's actually improved their corporate and social socially responsible report uh, social responsibility report and um, management was a driving force behind it they were all behind it because in the end it also saved them costs so I'm restraining forces I've got costs there but it was the initial cost to do that to actually implement all these new technologies to enable them to bottle the um, bottle the product themselves, the time it took to implement that, um, and also a loss of productivity while that was being done with possible restraining forces that you could talk about. Now the results was essentially was a massive, massive reduction in the carbon footprint. So 65,000 truck kilometres have been cut from the supply chain because obviously they don't have to go from the bottles um, to um, to their factories. So 30% less energy used, significant reduction in the water usage due to the change in technology, and the 30% less PET resin in all the bottles. Now, I don't know all about the um, the plastics and things like that, but that PET is, is a type of plastic. There's less resin in the bottles. There's also 33% less in the caps used on a bottle of Coca-Cola. And the impact, of major, well, I mean, the major impact there is in the internal environment is a change in structure because rather than outsourcing that bottling to the franchises, they're now doing it themselves. Now, ethics and social responsibility. Changes listed have had a large positive impact on the environment. It was a large initial cost for the company, so that was a drawback. However, improved public image due to the improved corporate responsibility report. Also in the report was included, there was a 17% malaria 17% less, that should say, uh, malaria cases in Papua New Guinea due to the supply of free uh, mosquito nets for all employees. Improved, also improved employee engagement in, this, in Australia and less days lost due to injury. So that's a little bit about um, Coca-Cola. Remember on the blog post, I've got a link to their, um, to the video from the, I think it's National Geographic website that you can look at their operations in full. Um, so yeah, so I hope that helps for those that are, have really struggled with an organisation you've studied this year. Um, feel free to email me, I can you know, send you a few links to where I got this information from and things like that. Um, so and just remember for more resources to help you with your upcoming exam, then come on over to teachingbubble.com.